some time ago uh, I got a comment under one of my closure videos and um, it was about uh, debugging closure code uh, so the question was uh, is it hard to uh, deal with issues uh, and debug and like find the problem in the closure application and what tools are available so this video will cover uh, some basic approaches uh, that you can take to debug your your problem um, and uh, hopefully that will show that it's quite easy and uh, in closure um, we have some benefits uh, compared to other languages um, that we'll see in this video so first of all um, I have an application uh, what I, what I can do is to actually run it in the repo um, I have a setup uh, with component to do the reloads uh, from the REPL. So when I hit a magic uh, key binding command, it will restart uh, the REPL, uh, the, the system for me. So it's all managed in this development uh, namespace uh, where I have my uh, component REPL set in it uh, function and then I define how I build the system. So when I uh, hit uh, command one for me, it will restart uh, the system for me. And this OK means that uh, my application is running. So now if I go to my uh, terminal, if I do a curl and hit one of the APIs, um, there'll be an exception, but I basically edited it uh, just before the video. It just basically means that we're hitting the uh, one of the endpoints and it's not working correctly. So now we want to understand uh, what's going on. And um, as in many uh, programming languages, uh, the first way you can go is actually add some print lines uh, in different places. Uh, the benefit enclosure that I was mentioning before is that when you're printing some uh, data structure, not something similar, simple as like primitive int or string, if you have like a map of maps and vectors, etc., um, by default it's printable, right? So in, in Java, if you want to um, print your custom object or like collection of objects, you basically need to make sure that uh, like two string methods are implemented, etc. So it could be a bit tricky to just print whatever you want. In Clojure, we can print whatever we want. And here, um, one of the um, functions available is uh, print line uh, that will add like a uh, new line at the end. Then you can do some strings here. Uh, so this works like that. And also, if you don't know, you, you can, it's like uh, multi args. So you can put um, uh, things there and they will be printed with a space in between. So you don't need to think about uh, string concatenations if you say like uh, request and then. Um, a something like that uh, there'll be a space here so that's the basic thing so what we can do is for example uh, we are in our request handler that's failing and first of all we want to know how our request looks uh, print um, print ln request then we do the reload uh, and when we hit our API again if we scroll a bit uh, we'll see our map right here that's our request um, that's not ideal right but at least uh, we can just copy that maybe put it in some other file uh, do their formatting etc and we can find out what this request looks like um, the, the upgrade to that is to actually use a pretty printer that's available there's a specific namespace so if we do closure uh, dot pretty print and then print uh, then we can print any object here and for simple objects that won't be different different but uh, if you print the request it will be uh, split it in multi lines and uh, correctly formatted so let's grab this and put it here and print our request now we can reload the, um, the application again and hit our API uh, and now, as you can see, it's much better. So instead of just a single line, we now have multi-line and pretty printed uh, object that represents our request. The next thing that we can do is actually not uh, pollute our code with this 
print lines that we need to remove after we um, finish. Uh, there's um, a plug like a helper library available that's called hash p and uh, you don't need to add your this dependency into your code. Uh, if you use a line again, for example, it will be on the like global level. Uh, that's a thing called um, uh, lane profiles. So if I open that, uh, these two lines, uh, just ignore this native image for now, uh, we have dependencies, uh, this hash p uh, library, and then we have this injection that will do the preload for us in all namespaces. And as I said, it's not specific to this particular uh, repo I'm working on. It will be available in all uh, other uh, closure repositories that are using Lightning. So what that gives us, um, basically, you know, we now can use this uh, uh, symbol, which is hash p, and we can put it in front any form that we're interested in. So we now can remove this line. Um, and let's say we're interested in uh, the same request, uh, but maybe here, right? So, as I said, we just put um, oops, uh, hash p before that, uh, ignore this uh, underline uh, warning, then we reload this thing, uh, call our, oops, uh, no, not this one, uh, we need to call our API again, and if we scroll up, it now looks different. We have some colors and etc. And basically it prints our um, next form. So in, in our case, this request. And also it's like a reader macro. So it will tell us, if I scroll to the top, yeah, it will tell us where this, this happened and uh, which function uh, and line, etc. So we, we know where this print was from. And um, the request is quite big, right? So maybe let's uh, do something else. So let's say we want to print our query params here. So we can do hash p, reload, uh, call the API, scroll there, and we should see it somewhere here. Yeah, so here we go. I can make this a bit bigger. Uh, so this is our namespace, this is our function, line number, and then our form that we were printing. Uh, I think that's pretty cool. And um, really you can just do it uh, on any line. Um, and after, after, you need, after you finish, um, you can just remove these symbols. Uh, it's quite easy uh, to, to find all of them. So this is quite handy. If... Um, this basic approach with print lines isn't working for that reason. Um, but from my experience, when I'm debugging something, this print lines is the, the only tool you need. But sometimes you just want to uh, go uh, quicker or maybe run some experiments, etc. So in that case, we have access to a proper debugger. Uh, so that's not a problem. Um, I'm talking specifically about uh, IntelliJ and Cursive, uh, and we have access to the default uh, debugger, Java debugger available in, um, in IntelliJ, uh, and it also knows to some extent how to work with Clojure code uh, from the Cursive um, plugin. So to do that, instead of running just REPL here, uh, I'm stopping it and clicking on this bug uh, icon. That will uh, start the same REPL for me, but everything will be in debug mode. So if I'll put a breakpoint in my code, um, I'll be able to stop at that breakpoint and uh, see the current state of the virus, etc. So this is now running. I'm restarting my application. And then let's say I put a breakpoint here, maybe here. Um, in a in couple places. So one of the downsides is that as we have these nest, nested forms, um, sometimes you'll have this sign saying that it's not possible to put breakpoint right here. Um, it's really hard to, to me still understand uh, what are exact rules, but, um, and yeah, maybe I need to spend a bit of a bit more time trying to understand all these subtle differences. Uh, but for me, when I'm debugging Closure code with the debugger, I just put a bunch of breakpoints. One of them will uh, will work, and you just uh, hit hit that place. Uh, so that's a bit of uh, 
downside compared to like Java code where uh, you can you can better understand how breakpoint works. But anyway, let's let me demonstrate uh, that this is uh, working. Let's uh, run our um, call again, and now we we have access to the debugger, and it says that this line is now application is paused here, and we can have access to stuff um, in this context. So, for example, this request, we can click on that, we can scroll, we can see like we can open uh, different. Um, uh, you see, explore this map, uh, go inside, etc. Uh, one of the most um, uh, powerful things you can do is actually click on this uh, dots and then evaluate expression, and it will give us a um, way to experiment with any code, actually. So you can do request and hit enter. This will uh, show you the value of this var. Uh, but basically, it's same as REPL here. Uh, you can um, write any code you want. So let's say I want keys of, of the request. Then I evaluate that and I have only keys of that. Um, and basically you just put any code you want here. Like for example, you want uh, to run a string join on that. Uh, you can run that. Um, and also, for example, this function, uh, if you just want to call that, um, it's possible as well. Uh, when you get this thing that it's not uh, defined, uh, one way way to handle that is actually to use the full uh, full name uh, in in here, and it works. Uh, so, yeah, now it's only up to you how you explore the things, how you put your breakpoints. Um, in my case, it was basically failing because I just had to call it to remove Neil here from the request API. URL and then our, my call uh, get request was failing because of that. So if I remove nil from here, remove breakpoints, and actually there's a way to mute breakpoints if you don't want to remove them, uh, but you don't want to stop at any of those, you can just mute them, uh, reload, REPL, and um, uh, actually I need to uh, continue the program, but um, if I call it once again, now you see there is no exception and I'm getting some response uh, from the handler. So to sum things up at the end, we have kind of three ways. One is uh, just print lines uh, or closure pretty print if you're printing some, uh, some big data structure. Um, on top of that, you can use this line again uh, dependency injection to be able to use hash p. Uh, that's improved uh, compared to just print lines because you have access to metadata like uh, location where this print uh, happened. So you know the uh, function, namespace, um, and line number. Um, if that's not enough for support, whatever reason, you can run uh, your code in the debug mode and put breakpoints. Uh, explore what's available in those breakpoints and then run any closure uh, code snippet in this evaluate expression um, but that's kind of standard to uh, debugging process in java so for me i can see only uh, benefits uh, in closure because of this uh, option that everything is printable that's a big one for me a uh, slight downside as i said is that this weird behavior of the breakpoints in the nested uh, code of these S expressions in the Lisp. Uh, but with some experience, you are uh, getting like familiar uh, what works and what not. And um, yeah, you just get used to that. All right, so I hope that uh, show a bit of information on the topic about debugging the closure code, uh, closure applications. Um, if you have any other ways you're doing that, let me know in the comments or just Leave whatever comment you want, like and subscribe as usual, and see you next video. Bye-bye.